Good day, David. First of all, let me thank you for agreeing to do this video with me today. For our audience, would you please introduce yourself and give us a little brief background about your time in L&D and what you've done? Yeah, thanks, Guy. Um, so my background is uh, I've, uh, I've been in learning development over 20 years now, but uh, 15 years of that was in-house. Um, most notably, and perhaps most interestingly, I was eight years at Disney. Uh, I ended up running a, the learning talent and organizational development function for Europe, Middle East and Africa uh, when I was at, uh, when, while I was there at Disney. Um, and that was uh, uh, subsequent to a stint when I ran the UK uh, learning and development function, uh, again, for all of the, the, the lines of businesses and functions at, uh, at Disney. Prior to that, uh, I was in, uh, I kind of cut my teeth in learning and development or training and development as it was then. Um, uh, in finance and banking. Uh, I had a year in Lehman Brothers. Uh, I was at uh, NatWest and Lloyd's, uh, all based in the, uh, in the UK. So, uh, so I learned to become a facilitator. I learned how to build curriculums. Uh, I, I learned how to trap myself in the expectations of running those courses um, to the, to the um, perhaps detriment of, uh, of, of my ability to, uh, to, to solve real problems. Uh, but I'm sure that's a, a familiar story to, uh, to, to a lot of our comrades. Thank you for that. Now on to the main event. Would you please give our audience your five to 10 minute or so take on what to measure and how to measure the impact of instruction in an enterprise learning context? Yeah, sure. So what I'll say first of all, Guy, is that um, while I spent 15 years in house, I spent just as long trying to find that magic formula that that formula that was going to help equate my solutions to impact um like everybody i i i built a suite of uh, of programs your communication skills presentation skills this was wherever i went and you know even when i joined the disney team i looked at the schedule and i wondered what's missing so we could so we could plug that gap but i was still attending workshops bringing in consultants, uh, downloading eBooks and, uh, uh, and, and whatnot to try to find that magic formula because it always came to the end of the year. We do our reporting uh, and I'd be asked, okay, so we've got our training days. We've, we can see the satisfaction. What link is there to return on investment? Is there any? Um, you know, fortunately, we could say, yes, uh, we're looking into it long enough for, for people to, to, uh, to be thrown off of the scent. But I will say, Guy, that that I wasn't able to find that formula. Uh, now, there, there may be people listening and watching uh, who have found that, and, uh, and I'm still keen to see. But... I would like to contrast that with some other initiatives and especially in my, my latter years at Disney when I wasn't just brought in to, uh, to run programs. Uh, I, I was fortunate to be uh, to find myself on the, uh, the, the, the European board um, a lot of the time to talk about transformation. So I was at Disney from 2006 to 2014 and there wasn't a part of the business that wasn't transformed in some way by um, the access to, to, to technology, uh, to changing consumer, demands uh, and ultimately the relationship between the consumer and Disney, which, which, which fundamentally shifted. Um, so I was involved in a lot of conversations around how do we shift this model? How do we integrate these teams? How do we present ourselves as a unified partner to XYZ retailers? Uh, and so we would work with the client uh, to define what the outcome will be and then the milestones that will get us there. We would work experimentally, iteratively, we'd, we'd coast a path. There were very few times, Guy, where we run a training course. And, and I always say this, that isn't it funny when it really comes down to brass tacks and you have to make a difference, we don't use the tools that we rely on when perhaps the problem isn't so clearly defined. It's just about the you know an, an array of different solutions but whether that whether it be a shift in operating model whether it be an integration of, uh, of different functions whether it be a deficit of, uh, of capability in entire regions we would define what it is what the outcome should be and then work towards that so the short answer is guy and i'm sure that uh, that that it could be worked out by uh, by by your viewer is that if you start with the solution and then you wonder whether it's having an impact on an undefined problem, 
it's a fool's errand. You can't make that unless it's something easily equitable, like like sales. Um, but even with some of the, the 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 stock solutions that we're used to developing in uh, in learning and development, whether that be induction or new manager development, we pride ourselves on on preparing people. But we never we we spend less time on understanding what the real problem that we're trying to fix is beyond building these people from from what I mean you know and this is why we always come back to attendance completion observation and satisfaction which are no indicators of learning they are no indicators of development they are just indicators of being there being exposed to and liking it and I think that that if we're if we're going to be taken seriously during this age and I talked about Disney's disruption there is no way that that during the, the squeeze that people are going to be experiencing that that CFOs CEOs aren't going to be looking over at the learning function and say let's continue hemorrhaging money uh, without any demonstrable results they're going to they're going to be asking especially during this time I think the next 10 years are critical we're talking about skills gaps here we're talking about um, uh, very real and very urgent skills gaps. Again, with the advances that I was, uh, what I was talking about before, and um, the the you know the uh, shorter life style style of skills and roles, we're going to either have to play a critical role or become periphery. And if we are periphery in the administer uh, administration and the delivery of a program, rather than the development uh, of of skills and capability then I think I think that the question won't be asked from inside learning and development, whether we're relevant, it's going to come from outside. Uh, and then we'll see the disruption, we'll see what the potential of learning and development could be, once it's been taken out of our hands. But, uh, but it all comes down to guy, um, that if you've if you understand what the problem is to be solved, what the critical point of failure is, or the of advancement required within any given organisation, then you can you can plot the path and know that you are that you're making uh, advancements towards that. Um, but but one final anecdote, uh, if I may, the way we do it currently is like hammering nails into your wall, all across your wall, just in case you're going to hang a picture up there. But what what an inefficient use of, uh, of your time of nails and what an ugly use of, uh, of your walls. Because if we understood what it was we were trying to solve in the first place, then we'd be incredibly efficient and targeted uh, at addressing that. David, thank you so much for sharing your insights with us today. Have a great day and week. Cheers. Thanks, Guy.